Hey guys, uh, this is Casey Foster. Um, may, some of you may know me from Netcode Illuminati. I am, I'm a co-owner of it with uh, Dazed. Um, or you may know me from when I played professional Counter-Strike. Um, played it for about 10 years uh, in and out of competitive play for the last 10 years really. Um, quit a few times, but pretty much always played pro. Probably on one of the better teams throughout my career. Um, Anyway, going to be doing a little commentary here for uh, Hatton. This is uh, one of his official matches on train with his team. Uh, Hatton Games Fuse, it looks like. And um, I'm not sure if they're playing top teams or not, uh, but told him I'd help him out, do a little demo commentary, probably break down some of his uh, plays, or I'm not sure who the strat caller is, but you know some of their strategies and you know things they could do differently throughout their um, matches or rounds. So. Uh, as soon as this goes live here, we'll get into it. Um, I've played Train a bit, actually. Uh, haven't played any seasons of CSGO yet. Actually, I played the first season of CSGO, and Train is totally different than it was in Source because of the uh, map plate, the, the the bomb train placements or the train placements. Sorry, outside and inside. Uh, so taking inside is a lot a lot easier to take as a seat as a terrorist, but it's a lot harder to hold. Um, in uh, Source, it was really easy to hold inside once you had a bomb plant as terrorists because of there's trains everywhere. Now there's not trains everywhere. And actually going outside is a lot easier now uh, than it was in Source because there's a train up close up close to T mid and outside's a bit more opened up. Um, so it was a bit harder to hold outside or it was about it was a bit it was a bit e it was a bit harder to take outside. And now it's a bit easier to take outside. But obviously that's uh, it plays both sides. So it looks like they're doing a three inside and uh, let's see what these guys do one's gonna watch team mid and the other guy's gonna watch the uh, the ivy push so I'm gonna be pausing quite a bit because obviously there's gonna be a lot of like important things to see here and there so um, it really looks like they've got a nice guy pushing up T T uh, T mid right here oh this is bad he's probably gonna frag this guy because he's uh he's peeking him so the guy standing still in T mid is actually at a disadvantage because the guy is peeking him, debaser is moving, so he has a peeker's advantage. But this looks like a pretty, uh, pretty standard default setup. Um, let's see what happens here. Uh, oh, got a quick headshot on him. Uh, kind of random, but still three guys inside. Uh, this is, you know, it's just pretty standard. They've got quite a bit of time to do something, but I would like to see them playing the pick a bit more. And it looks like. They're all committing to inside. And the problem with this is, if you look at the clock right now, it's one minute and seven seconds left. They're down 4v5. They never spot Ivy. I mean, they never had anybody spot down Ivy to see if there's anybody actually playing it. And they got a guy picked out in team in team mid, and now they're committing to inside, what looks like. And um, I don't see this, en this ending too well. Uh, guy throws a nade up the ramp. They get a pick inside. Yeah, see, the problem with this is now there's going to be bombing flashes into these guys coming down the stairs and or coming down the ramp. And they've got everybody rotated inside. I, I don't see them winning this round. And uh, kill the bomb planner. Yeah, they just got picked off, basically. So right now, the round is over. It's a pistol round, meaning the terrorists have an absolute massive advantage with their Glocks over the CTs. No matter what pistol the CTs buy, the terrorists still have an advantage. And the round is over. With 42 seconds left, that's uh, that's that's the first mistake. Um, pretty much any pistol round where, or any round where you're basically in a gun advantage, you just want to play, you just want to play pick and play your advantage. Um, they should have just been, you know, picking Ivy through a smoke, through a flash, tried to tried to gain some information as to where the CTs were playing. Instead, they just went at that blind, got got picked outside, and then commit inside. And that was their that was a, a huge mistake. Um, to just commit so early in the round so so I went ahead and fast forward forward through the eco rounds as you can see they lost it pretty easily uh, I mean they lost both rounds and the terrorists did get the bomb down so they should be on a full buy this round um, so I'm just gonna be doing this commentary on the fly actually so I may miss some frags and stuff as I haven't watched it and I think that's the best way to get you know unbiased information as to like setups and who's playing what so They've got a two IV, one above ladder, two or <laughs> three above ladder. So, again, this is not the best setup um, as team mid is completely open right now. So, if there's a guy to push up team mid like this guy right here, 
Um, he could be gaining uh, information as to where the players are at. And uh, the terrorists won't be gaining information as to where the CTs are at. So, <coughs> guy in ladder, uh, not the best setup. He, he doesn't really have any cover. He can get flashed and fragged pretty easily, um, as that's probably a pretty, pretty tough flash to dodge. I mean, you can dodge it, but you're still going to get kind of blind. So, it seems like one of the guys went down uh, down at Ivy as they had an opera pick in this and a, another backup player playing, playing by the sandbags. It's a pretty good setup because... With this, you can get the, if they were to bum rush this guy at Ivy, he can get one and fall back and still have his teammate to uh, back him up. Um, and it's pretty tough to take it when they do that. So looks like they're just holding their spots outside. And sure enough, the guy gets fragged in ladder room. They flashed him and pushed down. And um, we're able to get the kill. And uh, looks like they did get a trade kill as uh, this guy was in a good spot. I don't really know who killed him. AL, I guess he pushed out of ladder. Uh, probably, 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 pretty big mistake right there. As he put his team at a disadvantage instantly. They were in a four v three. Looks like one's creeping down ladder. This guy knows that there's forty second left, forty seconds left. So he's bombing flashes and nades. Uh, I don't really recommend using them uh, at that kind of time unless they're executing. And he couldn't tell if they were executing or not, so he was just taking a random guess. And uh, looks like they were get they were able to get the pick on the Ivy guy. And this guy's kind of fucked in sight. He didn't get out of sight in time. And uh, there are now a 3v1, 19 seconds left. Guys in, in Z. And uh, with this new this new bomb train outside, you can plant completely secure from Z. And uh, pretty much unwinnable round for him in that situation unless he was to just straight up dominate him and didn't really look like he was. You know, they just played their numbers. So good round by uh, Hatton Games there. Or Fuse, actually. I don't know if I'll call them Hatton Games or Fuse, but pretty good play they they took their time they got a picket ladder they got a uh, they got their their working their players working ivy and then they commit outside and uh, that's that's pretty much what they need to do every round um cts are on a full buy uh, yeah they're on a full buy again so if a uh, hat if hg can play this the same way that they did and just play the pick and work things slow and uh they'd be able to do pretty good so guy gets down ladder again the guy did not play in ladder room that time it's the same guy so he play he learned his mistake last round and played the outside of the ladder room um instead of getting flashed and getting fragged he got fragged that time but he was able to get a dink off on ralph's though so i'd say that he didn't completely lose that but uh he definitely could have played it different you know he can let that guy get down and and, and play a peeker's angle instead of just peeking into him while he's coming down so now they're in a uh, a four v a five v three. They got a picket ivy, a picket ladder. So that means the in the inside guy is probably going to rotate to Z now, or um, actually it looks like he's on top of uh, Z or CT connector. One guy's still inside, and one guy's outside. I don't see this guy outside doing too much damage. He's by himself, and he's going to get pinched on from ladder and from Z and everything. So he did get one kill, but was able to get traded on. Last guy's coming out Z. They're still in a two v one. This is winnable, actually. A oh, three v one, still winnable. He was able to get the kill. If he can slow the bomb plant down, or uh, this is actually pretty good. The only issue is if this guy, uh, this guy, la this guy, uh, hell, finds out where he goes, or if he gets fragged. So, pretty good. Oh, there it goes. You pretty much, you pretty much don't get that kill on that guy. It's pretty tough, but he ended up getting him. This guy's in a good spot. He's gets shot in the back. So. Nice try on Donut's part. He did turn a 3v1 into a 1v1, but, you know, that's a mistake. Randy, uh, a rookie mistake right there is just not checking spots, and you pretty much have to check every spot when you're in these kinds of 1v1s because they were able to plant them. They had tons of time to get into good positions. So CTs are going to be on an eco this round. Fast forward through this. So the eco actually uh, for CTs didn't turn, I mean, for the terrorists, didn't turn out exactly how they wanted it. It ended up into a 2v1 versus Hatton. Uh, he planted the bomb outside and was able to get the uh, 2v1 clutch with the bomb down as they didn't have guns, but um, pretty much they they went a little quickly. So looks like they're doing their same default setup, two IV and three inside. Again, I don't really like this strat as uh, they're just have, they just have no intelligence at team mid. You know, if they were just to throw one smoke and have one guy try and find out if there's a guy up close team mid or a guy up close ladder, it would really make their uh, ladder take a lot more effective as they would have a crossfire on the guy that's actually coming down ladder. Um, and all it would take was just a smoke under CT, under the uh, ladder up close T mid, and then a guy to flash out of 
teammate to flash the guy that's up close ladder, it would pretty much guarantee uh, this guy to get down ladder every round as uh, they would be cross-firing this guy that comes up to ladder room every round. So, uh, again, still the 3-2 and the two guys, Ivy. Um, you know, don't don't really like it. It could be it could be majorly impacted with just one player going team mid. You don't need three people ab above ladder. Um, it's just it's just really useless. So CT is just holding their spots again. This guy's in ladder room. You know he's got no cover, no no help up close mid. Not the best setup. He could play you know just right outside of ladder or on top of the ladder train and looking into ladder, and would just be a much better play. And again, see I mentioned that there was nobody watching team mid. This guy pushes right into team mid, and uh, he got legged of course. But you know it's just. If they had somebody there, this guy probably would have been dead. It would have been a 4v5. And then they could have easily flashed the players down ladder. So just a simple uh, change could have really impacted the round. He did rotate back outside. <coughs> and uh, looks like these guys are rotating inside as they think something. Oh, no, they're still, still in their normal positions. But T's are really taking their time. They're doing a good job of working stuff this round. Uh, let's see what they do here inside. If there's anybody actually to do anything. They're playing a pretty passive inside. No op on the big ramp. And uh, they just have a guy spotting lower. So looks like they're uh, throwing a fake. Um, oh, that was a weird. They were executing inside and, and at ladder and at ivy at the same time. Yeah, that's tough. You know. The issue with that is if you're executing inside, you have to get the guy to rotate. And they went at the same time, so there was a big problem with that is if you go at the same time inside and, and Ivy, the guy isn't going to rotate to inside, and they're still going to be at Ivy. So you have to hit inside, give it a few seconds for the guy to get out of his spot, and then flash and then take the spot, take the places, or take Ivy. So not the best timing on that strat right there. They were rushed on time a little bit, but, um, you know, just... When you really get flustered like that and you only give yourself 15 seconds to execute a strat. Alright, and so uh, Hatton Games Fuse actually ecoed the last round as they lost the round before. They did get the bomb down outside, as you can get the bomb down pretty easily <laughs> since the train is up close, so up, uh, close up so mid. Up close to mid. <laughs> um, so they're on a full buy this round, full nades, full guns. And uh, let's check out their setup if they've actually... Uh, change it up a little bit so they're doing a different strat obviously as they've got two people oh still the same strat three inside no oh, no no they do have a different strat they have one guy watching ivy this round since the guy pushed mid last round and they've got two guys mid looks like this guy's setting up for a uh, set smoke here uh this guy right here and then they have their two inside uh above ladder so looks like he's going to be throwing a ivy smoke or something Maybe to get this guy out of Ivy. Probably what he's doing. Uh, the only problem is he peaked and got fragged. So pretty much you never want to peek this guy that's in this position right here unless you have an op. Um, unless you smoke it or flash it, then you can peek it and try and gain some advantage. But I mean gain some uh, some move or some distance. But pretty much if he's standing like this and you walk out like that and you don't jump or bunny hop or shoulder peek to get him to shoot and you just run across like uh, Angel just did, you're going to get fragged. So my recommendation is to just ice just a lot. It's just shoulder peak. Just run out a little bit to where your shoulder hits that pixel of the corner, and they're going to shoot their gun or they're going to reposition, and you'll be able to see them and see if they're there or get them to shoot, and then obviously you can move when, they're, when they've shot their gun. So looks like that guy uh, probably was in a good spot to throw a smoke, and it's probably wasted now, or he's still going to throw it, and they're just going to go off of a fake. It's actually Hatton, so... Uh, now they're at an instant 4v5. Angel put his team at a huge disadvantage, uh, T side of train. And it uh, looks like they're going to be doing a pinch. So there's 58 seconds left. They've got two guys coming down ladder. They smoked off um, smoked off something. He threw it to look toward, towards like the back of the bomb train or Ivy or something. And they're just committing on outside. So now the issue is, see, these two guys are up close. He's just been sitting here listening. He knows that there's either one person there two people he knows that there's people there that's why they have two guys up close mid they have a guy in ladder room and uh probably a guy z or something oh he's actually inside and then back ivy so they're running into a stacked site i don't see this working out too well um this guy does have a p90 and is able to get one 
now they're in a 2v3 and uh, they're uh, getting the CTs are actually getting into good positioning now so they're they're taking their time looks like they didn't just full out rush it they did get outside Stim gets the kill on the guy in heaven and they're still in a pretty bad situation to win this round as Speedy's just opping the bomb site this is generally where people plant um, unless they plant on top of the train or somewhere else he's probably gonna get that frag so again in a 2v2 they're taking their time they have 30 seconds left and it seems like they're gonna just run straight back to enter this is a good play apart from that guy Z uh, oh they're running both and they've both rotated now um, Oh, look at that! Yeah, donuts. Totally read the totally read the play. Rotated inside. Nice try on Fuse's part. Um, I probably would have wrote, just had one person run inside, and then the other player that was ladder flanked down or flanked through Z. And uh, since they had so much time, you know, the dude could have fake planted inside or just held it. You know, they both rotated super quickly. Again, hindsight is twenty twenty, but you know. Yeah, that's generally what a a, be a better team would have done is split up in those kind of or you know played played numbers really, and uh, got the bomb down and then just had a guy flank and the other guy could have hid. So uh, on to the next round. Again, a pretty quick eco. Uh, they threw one out terrorist threw one outside mid and then four man dinner and donut just ripped them all with headshots because he was in a good spot. Oh, looks like they're actually doing a little bit of different strat here. So they've got one guy coming out mid with an op to try and get some information this is good this is uh you know they may not be ready for it i mean the terrorists may not be ready for it but this is this is a good play um although if this guy's going out mid this guy has no business just standing here uh he could be totally doing something important like throwing a fake ivy to get the guy ivy to not look team mid, or to throw a smoke a flash something you know he's pretty much useless standing here and they've got their normal three guys going inside. Again, this is completely pointless to do three man inside unless you're doing a fast inside strat or fast down ladder. It's pretty pointless. Um, you know, especially if they're just going to be watching and holding stuff. So let's see what this guy did at T-Mid, if he was able to do anything. Uh, looks like he got flashed and smoked off. So at this point in time now, this uh, this guy should be coming with him at Ivy or, or gaining information at T-Mid. And... Uh, Looks like Rusta did come down ladder and got the frag on this guy again. I don't know why he hasn't learned his lesson and not played inside a ladder. Uh, he can easily sit in heaven and watch into ladder room and or play on top of the ladder train and do the same job that he's doing here, except not getting fragged. So right now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give the round to uh, Hatton Games and uh, and say that they're probably gonna go probably they're gonna go back outside, but. So they got a pick, and they fell back. That is probably the best thing that you can ever do in any situation where you get a kill. Instead of going Rambo and just trying to just go nuts and just get frags, getting a kill and falling back, it, like, totally puts a dampener on the CT side or the CT team's, uh, you know, morale. Except we have a big problem here. Um, seems like a rifler is going to run in front of the opper. Oh, he, he's – yeah, he did. He jumped – okay, so that's a good play. If a guy runs and jumps across and then the opper peaks, that's a good play. Um, see if he's got the communication to tell him that he was on the right side because he, he definitely saw him. Oh, man. he's It's a lot of rookie players' opera, opera mistakes here is to be moving, you know, when they can potentially get a frag. And, yeah, he may not know that the guy's jumping and running and jumping at the time, but pretty much your only job as an opera is just to stand there and get frags. So I'll give that, uh, that little interaction right there to the CTs. He did his job. He found out that there was two there, and he's going to hold an angle uh, instead of trying to contest those guys. He's holding a good angle here, so looks like they have one guy throwing a smoke inside. This is a really good smoke right here. Let's see if this guy knows what to do with the smoke. And okay, it was just a fake. So Hatton Games able to pick up a kill or the trade flat trade frag on the um, the uh, outside guy, and in a four v three right now. But um. Still, oh, okay, so they're getting a the bomb down now outside. One guy in Z, one guy flanking ladder. I don't think they're really going to win this round unless this guy ladder, unless this donuts guy pulls off a big round. They don't have anybody. Uh, they're able to pick the guy off Z. They don't have anybody really watching this. So he gets an easy frag, gets legged. Probably not going to win the round. Ooh, nice shot, nice shot. MRX to pick up the round. So three rounds T side so far. 
eh, it's okay. I mean, it's a little easier now in CSGO to win T-Rounds, but they've um, been kind of getting picked apart, putting themselves, or a lot of players on their team, putting them in 4v5s early in the round, and that really hurts your T-side strats, uh, you know, dying within the first 15, 20 seconds of the round. Unless you've got a fast strat, a rule of thumb is pretty much you should just never die. You should always be playing passive or well enough to the point where you're not going to die and you're in some position to gain some information as to where they are. Um, you know, by them, by you throwing a bait flash, a bait nade or something. You know, that's that should be your main job. So it looks like they're trying a little something different here. This guy's actually going to push up to the sandbag with a good smoke. Um, the only problem is he's up against the wall, so he can... He can be seen behind that sandbag. He did move up a little bit, so he could be good to go. And uh, let's say if they have the the guy opping it with him. Uh, no, it looks like he's fallen back to Z. So, again, this guy is pushed up into T-Connector. At this point, he can almost guarantee that they're going to go inside. I mean, not a guarantee, but he, he knows so much information now. He knows that there's not a guy watching team mid. He knows, you know, he, he knows that they're not executing out of mid. There's no one going to be throwing flashes out of here. So if this guy can communicate properly, he can give his team so much information. And he's probably going to pick a frag up off of this as well. Um, Fuse did check the uh, flank there. Oh, they, they knew that guy was there, but he still didn't get the kill. Um, so, yeah, looks like they're committing inside. And uh, who's got the bomb? Yeah, it looks like they're committing inside with the bomb in a 3v4. One guy inside. Good smoke there. And uh, Hatton was able to get the trade kill. They're guaranteed the bomb down, so some money. And um, if this guy would have pushed up on that, oh, was, yeah, if he would have pushed up on that smoke, he would have probably gotten the frag right here on this flanker. And um, yeah, they just got flanked, got fragged. Pretty much just got outplayed. What they really could have done differently is, again, just having one terrorist sit team mid and watch the push because that guy is just gaining so much information and if you if you kill that guy like twice that pushes up team mid as a ct you kill him twice he'll never do it again he'll start playing back behind e-box or behind the bomb train site and or the 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 site bomb train and uh it would just be there would be to totally different outcomes as to you know to the rounds because you just have so much more you can do when you have the guy off of team mid and uh looks like they're gonna eco and just rush out mid they did get a smoke down Got a nice nice frag on the, the site guy, and it doesn't look like they're planting. Oh, here's the bomb plant. So good plant. You know, that's pretty much all you can ask for on an eco round is to get the bomb down and potentially some kills. They did get some kills, get some guns, and uh, this guy's in a really good spot to, uh, you know, potentially win the round. And, oh, nice. This, is, this could be big. If they don't flash him and defuse the bomb or throw a 70 damage nade, he could have won the round in that situation unlucky on his part so they did get the bomb down they should be close enough to buying as if this guy can drop his teammate an op one of these guys unless they're one of these guys is the opper so good try there on uh, Hatton, Hatton Fuse's team and uh, Hatton Games Fuse good good uh, good strat to get the bomb down outside looks like they have their ecos down pretty well as they've gotten the bomb down every eco round and that's really been allowing them to buy um, Looks like they're setting up in a different default. So they have one guy, Hatton, actually watching Ivy now, or watching Team Mid, and two guys inside, and the two guys ladder, or Ivy. Sorry. Uh, this is, you know, this is a pretty pretty standard setup. This is pretty much what every pro team setup is, uh, something similar to this, or one guy above ladder, uh, if depending on the strat. But this is this is this is looking good. This is pretty much how they should be setting up every round. This is a huge smoke right here um, that they that was thrown. It allows the uh, terrorists to just totally rip the CTs, or the CTs to rip the terrorists that come out of ladder. Uh, and here, ooh, so here's the first situation where, where we've had a guy up close team mid, or watching team mid, and the CT is pushed into here. Let's see what happens. Hatton gets the kill. So now they're in a four, now the, now the CTs are in a 4v5, and they know that there's one guy uh, team mid now. And, um, See, now what's going to happen is the CT here, Malto, my, Malt High, Malt B High Roller, um, is in a situation where he could potentially die from mid and he could potentially die from ladder. And let's see if Hatton Games uh, exploits these, uh, this map control that they have here. 
not looking like they're actually going to is they probably don't, you know, not to say they don't know this uh, part of the, you know, the aspect of the game, but this is very similar to like war map control, you know, giving and taking parts of the map. So they, CTs had took taken mid, so they had part control of that part of that map and then Hatton killed the dude and now they had control of team mid. And if they were to, if Hatton was to get into team mid right now and flash out of ladder, this guy would be completely dead and it, they would be in a 3v5. So let's see what happens now. Um, oh, he's, Gets pushed up ladder, sees the dude's foot, goes for the frag, and and uh, Ralph so was able to get the kill. So now they're in a three v five without actually, you know, really doing anything apart from just playing better spots than they have the whole match. And um, if this dude can stay alive at ladder, uh, Hatton can throw probably a pretty good smoke for him here. And um, they have the bomb down somewhere, but I think they're probably gonna come back and get it. So he throws the smoke here to Ivy. So. This is probably a this is probably a pretty good clue that they're hitting outside, um, and it forces this guy off of Ivy. Um, I mean, not being able to watch up team mid obviously from Ivy. And uh, this guy's wrapping around. Oh no, he doesn't. Comes back to mid. So they're in a five v two now. They they're there's no way they're gonna win this round um, unless this dude just goes ape shit or you know days style. But planted the bomb. Perfect execution and perfect setup you know it's pretty much what they should have they would have they should have been doing the whole entire match is just having one do team mid and you can see how easily they won the round um, when they set up that way so more than likely these CTs are gonna save uh, not looking like they're rolling in dough and yeah, two of them got money um, yeah that would probably be best idea for them to save in this round so kudos to uh, Hatton Hatton Games Fuse for uh, changing up their setup and, and dominating them this round. And let's uh, see what they do on the next gun round. So looks like they're going, oh, they're, 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 uh, oh, it's last round, sorry. Yeah, they're totally buying, what was I thinking? Um, so last round, they've got a semi-buy. Some guys have SMG, some guys have big guns, and one guy still has $4,000 left. <laughs> Unbelievable, bad communication. Um, but it looks like they're doing a fast ivy probably to get the pick and uh, the CTs countered it by throwing a smoke uh, Good play good play to throw that smoke and they, they're still doing just do, doing a four outside and one guy inner and uh, This Malta burger guy got the kill on the ladder, dude, you know, it's uh Just a pretty standard play if they could just get a smoke into team mid by this team mid guy Maybe here or somebody else and then flash the guy down ladder they would have a much better chance of going down ladder instead of just free balling it and going down. So he throws the smoke. He's pretty much shut down ladder now. I don't see Hat Games winning this round. It is a bit early in the round to call it, but you know just how morale and uh, you know playing a 4v5 on T side of train is just tough. So good job by Maltburger getting the frag. I didn't really see it if he flash if the terrorist flashed or not. But another big thing is this guy's in a good spot to get a lot of information. He can hear where the players are going. And as well as this guy that looks like he's uh, pushed up close to mid. So he can hear, I mean, he can't hear Hatton right now as he's walking, but he can definitely, you know, know that they're not coming out of team mid. Ooh, he's got a gun to totally rip Hatton if he peeks. Whoa, that was a weird peek. So Hatton ended up shooting at the dude ladder. And boom, there he goes. So 4v1 now, 5v1 actually. Um, he's above ladder 30 seconds left got the bomb don't see him really winning this round as the guy spotted him inside and the guy above ladder or below ladder knows that he's there uh, 20 seconds left he's pretty much just gonna save and lose the round unless he's gonna try and run outside and get the bomb down but there was two guys up close to mid that killed Hatton so uh, not not sure what's actually going on he probably just realized that it was the last round and uh, that he needs to get the bomb down and he's got no time so that was a uh, pretty pretty stupid mistake. So and we're here on T side for uh, or sorry CT side with Hatton Games on CT side, and it looks like the terrorists rushed inside, got the bomb down pretty early. They pushed up upper, which is exactly what they needed to do, and uh, they had a f guy flanking outside. That's a textbook default pistol side strat um, for a rush. I don't really like doing that because you're committing inside. But again, I, like I said in the beginning of the commentary, you play your guns, you play your advantage. You know, they just five manned inside with Glocks. It's pretty tough, tough to stop those Glocks as they're strong as Colts. So 
if you don't play the pick, you commit to something with five people, not four or three. And uh, they were they did exactly what they needed to do, pushed uh, straight up inside and were able to, I mean, pushed up big ramp and were able to get those kills. So they're doing a pretty cool stack here. Um, two people pushed up inside. Uh, two, maybe looks like a guy under ladder. And if this guy Angel was to throw a flash, maybe he could do something. Oh, they're doing a boost here. But they heard him jumping. Able to really get the easy kill. Hat and peaks uh, a little late. If he would have if he would have peaked at the same time, uh, maybe had a little different outcome there. But pretty much he just got baited, as they knew a guy had boosted him. So in a five v three now on pistol or on an eco round, not looking too not looking too good for uh, Hat and Games here. And uh, they were able to get the bomb down pretty easily on a semi buy so some of the guys that had low low buy you know they'll be able to uh upgrade next round or the next so this is the first gun round for hatton games on uh ct side and let's see what their setup looks like um obviously depending on what the terrorists do looks like this guy's setting up for a uh smoke and uh, they've got one opera ivy, one guy spotting feet inside, two guys outside. Let's see what gun this guy's got. He's got a rifle. Good spot here. So pretty decent, pretty decent uh, setup here. Uh, the only weak spot I could see is them coming down ladder pretty easily. Yeah, they could definitely get down ladder pretty easily with no uh, nobody to contest them there. But I mean, if there's a, if they can get a guy in heaven, uh, they could do a lot of damage. So. Looks like they're burning a lot of flashes and smokes here early in the round. And uh, looks like the terrorists had some set smokes for outside to get down ladder and to get out of team mid. And uh, yep, see this is exactly what I said. Ladder was weak. They were able to get down ladder. One guy gets out, gets traded on, and uh, Hatton gets the frag on him to turn that two frag and or that one frag into a two kill. So they're in a tough uh, three v five right now with somebody right in front of this guy. Smoke definitely got in his way right there. And it uh, looks like the last two are going inside, and they've got a guy watching inside. If he can stay alive and just call the bomb plant and wait for his team, that will be a lot better than him just running in and trying to frag these guys right here. But looks like, yeah, he did get pushed up. Donuts was able to get the kill. That guy's been getting a lot of kills this game. He's probably got some pretty good aim. So they know where he's at, and they know bomb is down uh, on the lower ramp. So this guy might just, uh, you know, just be trying to wait it out and let these guys move around and try and get some kills but don't see much happening out of this and uh looks like hatton's uh hatton game setup worked pretty well they uh definitely got out of ladder a little easier than they should have been or should have been able to but uh came through in the round as they were able to get those um those uh mid-round rotation kills so the guys were trying to get through z and the dude was just standing behind the smoke and was able to get the picks or get the kills so so even though they won, they lost that first gun round, they ended up buying up again. Uh, as you can see, a few of them are pretty broke. So Hat and Games setting up the same way, apart from this guy's uh, on this side of the little dumpster outside, and they've got a guy up close uh, team mid now. So if Ralph Stick can get up close team mid, he can get a lot of information. Um, you know, he knows that they're not setting up a strat, uh, you know, not throwing flashes, not throwing nades out of there, not executing from mid. So a good uh good thing to do but looks like they've actually got five people going inside and uh if fuse can call the feet right here he can you know pretty much tell oh they're he's he's uh a little far back he wasn't able to see them so he saw a few people he doesn't know that four of them are inside right here good smoke right here to smoke this off this is a really good play uh is they're gonna have to run through the smoke they may just wait the smoke out but um good smoke on his part and uh, let's see if he's actually called for the rotate inside. Doesn't look like anybody's actually rotated. Oh, they still have a guy in sight. But... So he's still on the lower ramp. He's still spotting feet. They're going to throw another. Oh, that was their smoke. Oh, that's a really bad smoke. So, I mean, that's just rookie play right there. They've basically smoked themselves off. And uh, he's able to get one, get traded on by the guy that came out of upper as they didn't have a rotate on the big ramp yet. And um, Hatton's here on the flank. This is going to be tough because there's going to be two people watching this unless one of them just turned around or something. Three people actually watching this. He's going to need help from lower ramp or something to really get a kill here. Really taking his time, though. Being patient, was able to get one to do damage on the second. 
Gets the kill on the other guy. That guy was just in a really bad position. Hatton to pick up two there. And I can't believe they won that round. There, that was so such bad play. Those guys should have been playing. Those terrorists that were upper, they should have been playing behind the boilers. Um, oh man, that was that was so bad. Hatton was able to come behind them and kill three people, I think, or two people. I'm not sure. All right, and uh, the terrorist ecoed last round, and uh, we're able to get the bomb down inside. So looks like they're setting up in their pretty standard default they've been doing with three people above ladder and um the two guys ivy so this guy right here could you know potentially be listening for the, the mid guy pushing uh help his guy push at ivy or he could be afk <laughs> that's what i was thinking when i was watching it but uh not sure so just one guy sitting here watching the ivy push um uh, you know not really doing too much probably letting his guys inside do a little something something and uh, let's see if this guy pushes inside and gets picked no i don't know how that did not kill him oh you can see the bullet hit to the left or to the right so he was able to peek inside, spot an opera, and potentially this other rifler that was there. And they still have a guy above ladder. It looks like they're really taking their time on these last few rounds. Um, you know, just playing pick as they, you know, they really only need one round. And it's probably, you know, better to play it safe than sorry and just not try and rush it and get the match over with. But, uh, ooh, scary, scary, scary repeak right there. That's a common come oh god this is this is un, un unbelievable that this guy's doing this he's just re-peeking into the guy opping that's the fourth time he's re-peeked that's unbelievable and uh looks like fuse or M mrx was able to push inside and get two people and then get traded by uh malt malt b high roller so they've got uh one guy out ivy who got a nice little pick on a you know, lurking out ivy and the other guy is uh, inside, throws a little smoke, fake smoke inside. He's probably going to come down ladder. He's in a 3v1. Don't see him really winning this round. And they spotted him. Uh, two seconds left, no time. So Hatton Games picks up another round there to make this uh, 13 to 15. Still, this team only needs one round. And uh, do they have a full buy? They should have enough money to buy. They did not buy. They saved. I guess they're gonna save for, uh, save for the last round and just go big. It's a it's a risky play. I mean, I would have bought with their money. All these guys can buy AKs. I guess they can't full full nash full flash and nade. So, five people come in Ivy. Looks like he just mowed three of them down. And uh, they're just gonna get these last last frags here. So I mean, they're they're fully loaded up to buy right now. These guys have just more money more money than they'll really need. Like I said, they could have bought last round and been good to go. 15-14, little risky move there to save for the last round, but uh, let's see what happens here. They full bought up, and uh, what kind of setup are they doing? One guy looks like he's going fast mid. Two guys, three guys inside, and the other guy is going to go Ivy. So uh, let's see this guy, team mid. Let's see what he's got. He's throwing a nice little smoke. This is a good play. Gets the pick outside. That's exactly, exactly his play right there. He gets that smoke so he can't be shot from Z. Peeks out Ivy, gets the Ivy kill. So now this guy's just going to free roam right out of Ivy. Boom. And I bet they're going to pinch on the outside guys. They pretty much played that pick perfect. He was able to get the kill. Got a kill on the, the Heaven guy. That was a crazy kill. Important, really important kill. Pinched on outside. And uh, that's the match. So... As you can see, the uh, Terrace had a, a, a pretty much a lead throughout the whole match. And uh, Hatton Games was able to bring it back in the end. But just simple plays. I mean, just simple simple setups like having a guy team mid. It's just so important. If Hatton Games would have had a guy team mid, those T rounds, I mean, those first like 15 T rounds, um, actually probably would have been like 10 because they finally threw one person there. If they'd had a guy there, they probably would have picked up, you know, one, two, maybe three more rounds, which is, they obviously would have won if they would have had those uh, three rounds on T side. But, you know, it's just another thing I noticed was a lot of these players in these matches, I mean, a lot of the players in this match weren't really utilizing pop flashes and they weren't utilizing good smokes and good flashes. They had a lot of set smokes, but... That's another, that's another rookie mistake is a lot of players just depend on these smokes that they have like tons of time to set up and flash and smoke and stuff. And, you know, in, in top league play, 
you know, you really need to have you. Re every player on your team really needs to know every flash and every smoke that they can throw in every position that they do. You know, whether it's taking Ivy and they can throw a flash off this wall to peek this guy at back trains, or throw a smoke on the left side and throw a flash, you know, in between uh, five trains to flash the guy that's going to be playing in sight, and they can push the guy that's under hell. You know, all of these players need to be knowing these smokes and flashes and actually be utilizing them. Didn't see a lot of players in these matches doing that. So, I mean, it was a pretty good match. Hopefully the, um, you know, Hatton Games Fuse, pick, Fuse picks up a few tips from what I said in this match and, uh, you know, can really implement it into their game and, you know, win some more train matches. So, anyway, thanks, guys. This is Casey Foster with Netcode Illuminati. Hatton's probably going to be posting this video on his channel. So, uh, look for it there. Anyway, thanks, guys.